desk has arrived. And you are lucky. You are lucky. Because I am telling you, had this desk not been here, the bunions were coming out. So y'all better give a shout out to Little Lots Furniture for the good work that they did. Shout out to Little Lots for the desk. Stories today, Adventist youth build a church. Lady helps community destroyed by fire. Pathfinder wedding. All this and more coming up on GNN. But for now, how about some news? Just south of Lake Kariba in Zimbabwe is a district known as Binga. Now, this is the area that the youth from Beacon of Hope SDA Church in Blawaya chose as their mission field. Now, after ministering in the Manjolo district and conducting some baptism, the young people went a step further. And get this, they built the first Adventist church in the Manjolo community. The church is ever growing, and we want to applaud the Beacon of Hope youth for this initiative and hope that the spirit of church planting can cascade to other parts of the southern region and maybe, I don't know, just maybe the rest of the world. Now it's always inspiring to meet individuals who commit to helping particular communities on a long-term basis as opposed to once-off encounters that do not have a lasting impact. Now, Lindy Wambinga is one such lady who has been ministering in an informal settlement just northeast of Pretoria, South Africa for the past five years. Now, upon hearing that some of the community members had lost their homes due to fire, Lindiwe, with the support of her husband, Israel Mbinga, quickly mobilized church members to assist. More from Noel Sibanda. There is no smoke without fire, and fire is indeed what destroyed this informal settlement, raising it to the ground and leaving more than 67 families without food, shelter, and clothes, as everything was destroyed during this inferno. This is the very same community that we had our GID outreach project in 2018, the home that Sister Lindy Wembinga from the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division Secretariat Department has been evangelizing for the past five years, grooming and preparing these young children and their parents for eternity. Touched by this unexpected disaster that destroyed everything and left the families with no roof, no food, no clothes, Lindy, just as a good Samaritan, working hand in glove with the SID family and Akasha Church, mobilized the resources to assist the affected families. When I received a call from one of the church members that more than 60 families have lost their properties and everything that they had due to fire, around the area where I stay, there is a squatter camp and most people lost everything. And then I decided in my heart that prayer will not be enough. I then mobilized SID families and local churches families so that we can assist. And I want to thank the Lord who is so faithful at all times that I managed in two days time to be able to raise all the resources, most of the resources actually, that these families needed. We were able to distribute blankets and food that was a necessity at that time. I know that there's still more that needs to be done, but I know that at the right time God will provide for us. The church members and the SID family did not disappoint either, as more than 60 blankets, groceries, clothes for the affected families were put together to benefit our brothers and sisters, and the recipients were humble to say the least. The fire destroyed everything from our blankets, pots and beds. We were left with nothing except the clothes I am wearing. The church did a good thing for us. We are thankful. May the name of the Lord be lifted and glory to God because no lives were lost, but we lost all our property. We feel loved by the church members for this good gesture that came unexpectedly. With the help of some few friends and her husband, Lindy managed to give out groceries, blankets and clothes to the needy families, thereby emulating Jesus Christ, his ministry of love and compassion. We are here um, serving God's people who were destitute uh, because of the fire that burned their houses. 
and God being so gracious touched his people and the people graciously gave and today we are here helping the people to rebuild their lives again. Akashia SDA is giving uh, to the people that had a crisis of fire. There was a fire that destroyed their shacks and 60 families where they lost their homes. So Akashia is giving blankets, food and to help them with the crisis. Despite the leaky that is much in God's hand, more still needs to be done for these families, some of whom are our church members who still don't have a roof over their heads as the repairs are still taking place. As the winter season begins here in Southern Africa, for these homeless people, it is the opening up of a new chapter, a chapter full of more hardships and misery to come. For the GNN, this is Noel Spanda reporting from Pretoria in South Africa. Okay. This right here is a beautiful story. And it's beautiful because it's a story of action. In fact, both stories that we've told so far have been stories of action. Because all too often we find ourselves sending thoughts and prayers and forgetting that people also need actual physical help. Yes, thoughts and prayers are great and all, but sometimes I feel we're so quick to send them out because it takes nothing for us to send them. Can, can I have some water, please? You want water? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one better for you. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Close your eyes. Now, in the case of tell me you're Adventist without telling me you're Adventist, <laughs> a lovely couple had, get this, a Pathfinder-themed wedding. Have a look. Okay, this is brilliant and I love it, I love it, I love it and let me tell you why. These guys are proud to be Adventists. Okay, I would not be surprised if they had some adventurer themed hors d'oeuvres or Seventh-day Adventist sandwiches. Maybe they probably even had a three angels wedding cake. Oh yeah! In all seriousness though, uh, how fly do these Pathfinder uniforms look? And the bridal chain looking so good walking around like, oh these old things. Okay, it's a huge congratulations from us here at JNN to the happy couple and may God bless your union. On a sad note, it is with heavy hearts that we here at GNN would like to express our sincere condolences to the Kaunda family and the people of Zambia on the loss of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. From the homes to the streets, offices to the playground, the unifying slogan on the lips of all Zambians is, One Zambia, One Nation. KK, as he was affectionately known, was a man who believed that his contributions to Zambia would not have been successful if it had not been for the Bible. What in your opinion is the impact of the Bible in Africa as a whole and if you please in Zambia in particular, sir? <laughs> I am reminded by this point you make or the teaching of the Lord Love God, your creator, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is how you relate to him, our creator. As to how you relate to the one who has made his image like you, he teaches us from the beginning of time, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is where my colleagues and I brought to the nation of Zambia this teaching, one Zambia, one nation. It comes from the Bible, the teaching of the Lord. What does the Bible mean to you as an individual? 
Bible to me is everything that matters. I read the Bible every day. It's an amazing book, amazing book. So I depend on it. I depend on it. And I know that I could not have contributed the humble contribution I've made to Zambia without the Bible. At all. At all. Because of the Bible, I was able to understand the meaning of love, Christ's love. Because of the Bible, I was able to understand the meaning of love your neighbor as you would love as you love yourself. Now, if you love your, yourself, if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, how can you do any harm to him or her? Mm. If you love him as you love yourself, true meaning of this. So if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, there is no way you can do harm to anybody. And that's why you must do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's amazing teaching, amazing teaching. Described as the great son of Africa, the former president's contribution to the liberation and democracy across Africa will always be remembered. Now, I thought I knew a lot about the southern region of Africa, but travel, what, what? Is proving time and time again that there is always something new to learn. Now, unless you're living under a rock, you are very familiar with the COVID situation. Many people have been locked indoors for the better part of a year and a half. And if you're like me, you're getting tired of seeing your four walls. This is where we come in. Oh, yeah! One of the most amazing things about living in the southern parts of Africa is that we are surrounded by diversity, not only in culture, but in surroundings. This week, take a trip with us to Sao Tona, where we meet a dominantly reformed Protestant community. Take it away with a travel oh, what what? Travel what what? Swadanan is a historic community isolated in the heart of the Malagasy Highlands in the region of Hot Matsiacha, 450 kilometers from the capital, Antananarivo. It is typically a conservative reformed Protestant village called Fifuazan Pianotran Tumpu, Revival of the Lord's Disciples or Apostoli. The people there are known to be dressed in white, donning a straw hat with broad rims and a white ribbon for the men. If the parents are shepherds, their families are Zanakan Fifuazan or children of the revival who rigorously follow the same precepts of life. Adventism was introduced there in 2004, but no baptism was registered until recently. Hope for Suatana 2.0 is a new project where a group of volunteers with a strategic plan of a Seventh-day Adventist World Church, I will go, is doing a great job to spread the gospel to reach the village. As a result of this second campaign, the first two baptisms were celebrated in April this year. The village has four Adventist members who meet in a public high school each Sabbath. The project is planned for two years, where recruitment for 70 volunteers is ongoing to form VIP 70, according to Luke 10 verse 1, to work in this village. The plans are to have two big crusades, to purchase land to build a church, as well as a detoxification center. Thanks to our correspondent, Louisa, for that great find. 
Now our guest today here on GNN is coming all the way from Kenya. Oh yeah, where he is the marketing and communications manager for Adra Africa. Oh yeah, GNN, please give a warm, warm welcome to Mr. Joshua Safari. <laughs> Brother Joshua, habari? Mzuri sana tapiwa, habari yako? <laughs> Mzuri sana! <laughs> yes, we go international <laughs> here. <laughs> Thank you for oh, joining yes. us. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that you could actually, you know, um, uh, call upon me to be part of this great show I have been uh, following and I love the show. Thank oh, you. Thank th you for having me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, now, just to get right into it, because I know you're a busy man, um, growing up within the Adventist church, I was pretty familiar with uh, the term ADRA, um, which is uh, yes. where you're working. But for someone who's joining us today who might not know exactly what it is or who it is, if it is a who, could you please explain uh, uh, Adra. You know, Tapiwa, that is a very good question because actually not most people know what ADRA is. Uh, they know it as an acronym, but when you ask them to tell you what it means, some people might say, you know, it is Adventist disaster release, yes. relief, and uh, you know, all those things. But ADRA means that, you know, the acronym stands for Adventist Development and Relief Agency. It's a good thing because I've heard disaster as well many times, but you said development and relief. And yes. I'm, I'm wondering what areas then is ADRA developing and in what areas are you trying to uh, uh, relieve? Uh, well, in relief, I'm sure uh, because ADRA is known for being in disaster, uh, you know, disaster situations. So that's where some people think that it is a disaster uh, organization. So we cannot dwell much on that because everywhere there is a disaster, ADRA is always there, you know, to offer relief. But when we go into uh, development, we not only look at disaster, but even after, you know, you have responded to a disaster, these people have to develop. So even in the same disaster situation, you know, when you are done uh, responding, you have to bring back these people so that now they can get back to their communities and be useful and do something. At the same time, you know, we get into communities that really, you know, are in need. They're not really into a disaster, but they, they really need uh, to be helped. Because, you know, ADRA's, uh, you know, ADRA, uh, our, our mission is to serve humanity so all may live as God intended. So when you go into the community and you realize that this is not how, uh, you know, this is not how God would have intended that these people live. So that is where we come in and we see how can we help. And that is where you develop people from where they are using their skills. You try to develop them so that they can be better. Uh, you talked a lot about uh, disasters that happen and then the development thereafter. Is there some kind of training that one would need to go through to, to be able to, to help someone in a situation like that? Oh, yes. Uh, there is a lot that is involved in a disaster. You can imagine that, uh, for example, when Cyclone Idai hit, so many people were confused. They didn't know what to do. So ADRA workers... They go through trainings, and this is called emergency response training. This is a very rigorous, you know, training. Uh, you can even call it a military camp. I had an opportunity to go through it, and I can tell you, Tapiwa, it is not a joke. It is not a joke. Some people have given up. You know, by the time you are done with that training, you understand that it is not easy to respond to a disaster. You are the perfect person to be stuck in a dangerous situation with. Um, what kind of training, if, if I may just quickly ask, uh, is, is it that one would go through in terms of like the military's training? Um, okay, uh, at least for the one that I went through and we went to Madagascar, let me tell you, first of all, the first thing that they make sure uh, is the conditions that you have to go through, it is as if you're in a disaster. 
So talk about food. The food is not, you're not going to KFC, you're not eating McDonald's, <laughs> you're not eating, you know, your, your, your very good, uh, you know, rice and whatever. Mm. The food, you have to know that at some point, there is no food. So how are you going to survive? Where are you going to sleep? We were basically sleeping in, uh, you know, sleeping bags. Wow. You know, we were working all through the night. Wow. Because during a disaster, there is no time to sleep. That's right. So all through the night, you are working, and then, you know, it was cold. The mm. place we went to in Madagascar, it was freezing cold. You know, you don't even have time to take a shower. That is what a disaster is. So uh, together with the theory part that we had to go through, which now, you know, they have to teach you how to respond to people, how to treat people when you are in a disaster, because remember, these people are human beings. These are people who had everything. So you don't treat them like they are nothing. These are people who just lost all their fortune. So we learn how to treat people as, as, as human beings, you know, to do no harm. That as we do what we do, you make sure that you do no harm. And at the same time, you need to learn how to live with yourself with, uh, you know, with nothing, you know, nothing at all. Um, now, to kind of move uh, on to a, a different topic that's kind of been on the lips of everybody, um, the pandemic that's, you know, hit the, the globe. Um, mm -hmm. It's a two-parter question. The, the first uh, part is, how was uh, ADRA uh, affected? And uh, part two being, uh, what response did you guys have to the COVID situation? Uh, as you can imagine, the pandemic has hit all of us, you know, really hard. And uh, disasters have been happening without a pandemic, and they have been hard enough to deal with. Now you can imagine dealing with a disaster during a pandemic. Uh, if I may remind you, uh, when the, I think the second cyclone hit in the Southern Africa, yeah. uh, the second and the third, this was really into the pandemic. Mm. And so you can imagine people dealing with the pandemic and then now they have to deal with uh, being displaced and they don't have homes. So as ADRA, we have been affected because of, you know, the pandemic has brought about limited movement. You know, you cannot move around as freely as before. At the same time, if you are to respond to a certain community, you can't bring people all together, you know, in masses. Right. So we now have to go back and think how best can we serve this community without again, you know, exposing them to the uh, coronavirus. So it has really been uh, tough, but ADRA has been there. And it's uh, inspiring to see the, the work that you guys are doing. And I know all that work does not, it's, it's not free. It costs money. So if someone no. is watching and wants to, to help or, or get in contact with, with ADRA um, and join in, in one capacity or another, how would they be able to do that? Anyone and everyone can be able to support ADRA with the little that they have. You can give anything that you have. It is not only for the millionaires and the billionaires. Mm. Oh, yes, we need, we, need, we need the big chunks as well. But I'm just saying that anyone and everyone can be able to support. So I'm encouraging us all that when you are giving your offering, think about ADRA. And you can just give whatever you have in any way that, you know, you plan, a planned giving, whereby you know that at least once in a while you give something to ADRA. Yeah. And, and is there an email or a number or something that they can reach out to? Oh, yes. Um, there, there, there are many ways that we can be contacted. Uh, first of all, if you are in a country that has ADRA, uh, you can actually contact them directly or even through the church. Because the church, when you give through the church, through the offering, they know how to get this money to ADRA. Right. However, if you also want to contact ADRA directly, uh, you can you can contact your country office or you can con contact the regional office. You can contact us on info at adra-afro.org and we can be able to guide you on how best 
you can help. And for more information, you can also go to our website, adraafrica.org. So, you know, you will get all these contacts. You'll even get contacts of other uh, country offices to know how and where we are in the African continent. Yeah. And, and, and just quickly before, before you go, is there any exciting uh, projects or anything exciting uh, within ADRA that's, that's happening that you'd like to share with us? Uh, yeah, and um, I think th there, there are quite a few, but let me just mention, mention this. In the Southern Africa region, in about five countries, we have a project called the Youth Empowered Project. Now, we all know that uh, the, the prevalence of HIV in the Southern Africa region is actually higher than other regions. Mm. So there are so many young people that, you know, get into uh, all sorts of manner of uh, businesses when they are still young because maybe for so many reasons. Right. They might even uh, drop out of school, and when they drop out of school, they might end up into prostitution, you know, yeah. uh, drunkenness and all. So ADRA has actually identified uh, that gap, and they are bringing all these young people who uh, might seem like they do not have a future, mm. and some of them are being encouraged to go and train in vocational schools, and uh, for those who uh, might have uh, dropped out of school and, uh, you know, maybe have kids or are pregnant, they are brought back and they are taught on how best, uh, you know, to live. They are empowered. All right. And as I speak, we have a few who have already even graduated. Wow. Who have graduated from these vocational schools who are doing something for themselves. And these young people also go ahead to mentor others, to teach them that, you know, this is not the best way to live your life, that you can actually do better. And so in those uh, five countries that I've mentioned, we, I, I'm, I'm seeing a change, you know, with what the young people can be able to do. And uh, so uh, really this is an encouragement to all of us that we can do something, that it is not just upon ADRA, but anywhere we are in the community, we can actually be helpful. We can, uh, you know, see uh, these, you know, the street children that we have everywhere. How can we be able to help them so that they can, you know, they can live uh, just as God intended? Wow. Yeah. And you, you, are, you are changing lives um, for the better. And, and we, we really appreciate you here for GNN. Now, I'm not going to take any more of your time uh, because I, I feel you have a lot of things to do. So thank you very much for joining us here on GNN. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tapiwa. And may God bless you. God bless you and Asante Sana. And there you have it, another installment of GNN Come and Gone. Thank you once again, Safari, for joining us and telling us a little more about ADRA, amazing stuff that you guys are doing. Now, if you want to hear more things about the stories that you heard or more stories, you can go to our website, www.echo.sid.adventist.org. Or if you want to email us just to say hi and how much you like this new desk, you can do so at echo at sid.adventist.org. Until next time, I'm to Pew, I'm supposed to be saying, I am happy to have this desk because I didn't have to show you my bunions. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha!